My family moved into a small house in northeast Ohio when I was about five years old. I had a bedroom on the first floor for a few years and everything went fine. The entire upstairs attic was my parents' bedroom since it was just one giant room. When I was about 12, I switched rooms with them so I could have the big room. The attic always gave me a strange feeling, but nothing horribly off-putting. Sometimes I would be sitting at my desk alone and I would manage to spook myself out with what I thought was just my wild imagination. I just never felt completely alone for some reason. A few months after staying in the attic, a young boy started to appear in my dreams, probably about six years old. He was almost blue in color, had short dark hair, and he wore little shorts and a button-down shirt, almost like a 1960s type school uniform. He always had a neutral expression on his face. He never spoke to me in my dreams. He was just... there. He would occasionally point to things or just stare at me. I never once felt like he was evil or malicious. I think he just wanted to be seen by me. I would always wake up feeling like I was being watched after seeing him in my dreams. One night, I had a dream that he was standing by my bed staring at me and when I woke up, I felt an overwhelming presence close to my bed. I felt sick, like something was horribly wrong, but I still didn't feel like the boy was evil, just sad and lonely maybe, like maybe he was having nightmares and wanted to be by me. I started to recognize his presence whenever I would feel like I wasn't alone in my room. Fast forward to when I was 16, I hadn't seen the boy in my dreams for quite some time, until my grandmother passed away. I fell asleep the night before her awake and saw the boy in my dream. I was in a field and he was standing at the top of a hill with his back turned toward me. Keep in mind, I have been dreaming about him for about four years and he has never spoke to me before. He turns around and looks at me and in a soft, slow voice he says, You know, her feet are cold. Then I woke up. I felt strange because he literally has never spoken to me before, but then he randomly tells me that someone's feet are cold. So, I went to my grandma's open casket wake that day and my mom started to throw a fit because, along with my grandma's favorite belongings that were placed on her body in the casket, there was a pair of her favorite slippers on top. My mom wanted the slippers put on my grandma's feet because her feet were always cold when she was alive. She wanted to make sure my grandma's feet would be warm in the afterlife. I had no idea that my mom even asked the funeral home to put the slippers on her. I realized that the boy who often visited me in my dreams was letting me know that my grandma's feet were cold. Although I still saw him in my dreams and felt his presence, he never spoke to me again after this. I always felt a special appreciation for him. I felt more connected and at ease when he appeared in my dreams or when I felt his presence. He was like a guardian of some sort. I grew to love him. I don't live with my parents anymore and ever since I moved out, He stopped appearing in my dreams. I miss him every now and then, and I'll go into my old bedroom and sit on the floor just so he can see me, so he knows that I'm okay and I still think about him. This is a real experience of mine, and I've been wanting to share it with people for years. Maybe I'm crazy, but I know what I felt, and I know what I saw. It was the summer of 2010 during the World Cup. I was chilling with my older brother at home and my uncle calls us and asks if we could sleep at their house for one night because their door lock was broken and my uncle and their family had to go to a nearby town for a quick vacation. My brother reluctantly agrees and we go to their house, taking the keys, even though the lock's broken, and begin our duty. After we finished our dinner, we were sitting on their couch in the living room waiting for World Cup matches and... Suddenly, around midnight, I hear a quiet footstep closing on us from the bedroom. I was scared and I asked my brother if he heard that too. He becomes silent and we both concentrate on the approaching sound. As we listened to it breathlessly, the footstep made a turn and went into the kitchen and soon we heard some noises from the cupboard as if someone was searching for something. I was frozen but my brother regains his mind and, suspicious that it might be a burglar, runs into the kitchen. However, there was no sign of any trespassers. 
We were very freaked out and we continued the night in fear and alarm. After we came back home, several other people noticed the sound. Our uncle experienced a lot of sleep paralysis and eventually decided to move out and contacted the previous owner and asked if they knew anything abnormal about the house. The previous owner said that the apartment was rented by a young couple. The husband worked for long hours and came home really late and the wife always prepared his dinner at night. Presumably during one such night, the poor woman slipped in the kitchen and fell and hit her head. When the man came home, he found his wife deceased and moved out after a while with much grief. The owner said that since then the apartment became haunted and those footsteps and the noise in the kitchen were undoubtedly a repetition of what happened that night of her death. I don't know how it happened. I'm over 40 and recently had my tonsils taken out. If anyone knows, it's a lot harder for adults to recover from that quickly. Anyway, I live with my sister and in January 2018, my sister's cat died. While she has several cats, she was really torn up about losing this one as it only has three legs after a car accident. In February, after getting laid off, I had my surgery and stayed with my girlfriend and then at my mother's as I recovered. I had to go to the emergency room twice for excessive bleeding. The second time I went to the emergency room, they were able to chemically cauterize it using Afrin nasal spray. The ER doc sprayed tons of it in the back of my throat. After a few hours, I was able to come home as the bleeding began to stop. I got home at about 2am and tried to go to sleep. About an hour later, I began spitting up blood again profusely. My mom and brothers went to bed. I didn't want to wake them as I had already put them through the ER. In the bathroom mirror, I noticed that I looked really pale. I started to get afraid that I might die as I read so many things about bad tonsillectomy experiences. I know it sounds silly to some, but when you've seen so much blood coming out of you, you might think that too. I got the bottle of Afrin the ER doc gave me which the ER bill was 800 bucks, and I'm still mad about that. I sprayed probably half the bottle down my throat, and this is where the strangeness happens. I remember praying to the universe that if I die, please just put me in another parallel universe close to mine. I don't want to leave yet. I then fell asleep almost automatically. When I woke up near morning, I ran to the bathroom, and huge gelatinous blob of blood clot came out of me. It was about the size of my palm, cupped. A few minutes after I stopped bleeding and began to recover very quickly and everything seemed normal. Two days later I was able to eat noodles and near normal food except for crunchy stuff. So about a week later I came home and everything seemed normal. I went to the kitchen and guess who's there? My sister's dead cat. Alive again. Since then I have noticed things many of which are covered in the Mandela Effect videos and some things with friends and family that are somewhat different. But more explicitly, I've had several revelations come to me in regards to this reality. What happens when we die? I believe that if we live in a simulation, so like any other game, we are given a few choices when our avatar dies. Extra life. We get an extra life and respawn in a similar point in the game. Start the game from the beginning. Reincarnation and selection of a new avatar. I think the light tunnel we see at the end is the birth canal. End the game. Heaven and rejoin others that have ended the game. Purpose of the simulation. I believe that we might be from the future and because of great wars and destruction, the human race has created a learning machine controlled by artificial intelligence we created. As children, we are put into this matrix so that we can learn and grow. Hopefully to live a better, more fulfilled life in the baseline reality. So I'll start with the beginning of things. It started when my mother was around 17 years old. She spent a lot of time outside, mostly at night. One night she was outside on her front porch when she could only describe a distorted galloping. She honestly thought it was just some horse that got loose, but there was nothing, just the sound. It was coming closer and closer and yet nothing. She decided to go inside for the night and for a long time. 
so she would still spend her time outside, though, in the daytime, and she eventually heard it again. It was basically the same thing that happened last time, but now just during the day. The third account is more interesting. She was on the way home from work. She worked late, it was around one in the morning when this happened. She stopped at a stoplight and she had the windows down for God knows what reason. She heard the noise yet again. It was moving towards her car and it went in front of her car. But this time, she could see it. She described it to be like a very hairy brown dog that could walk on two legs if it wanted to. It ran across the road and disappeared. My mom sped home and wouldn't get out of her car until her father walked her into the house. The final account happened last year. I was on the way home from school with my mom and my brothers. We were approaching a bridge when, in the distance, me and my mother both saw it. It was exactly like her description. Hairy brown dog that looked like it could stand on two legs. It crossed the road and disappeared. I've been spending a lot of time trying to find out what this is or find it again with no luck. If anyone knows what this could be or needs any more details, let me know. And thank you for taking the time to read this. I'm 25 now and I've been experiencing a lot of stuff that I can't really explain. This is going to be a long post since I want to share as much as possible with you. I'm not going to write down everything though. So a couple of years ago I lived in an old house with my family. I was at home in my room, sitting on my bed while reading a book. All of a sudden I felt this really strong presence and that someone was staring at me from a corner in my room. I got this super uneasy feeling. My whole body was screaming at me that something wasn't right and that I needed to get out of there. It was a really uncomfortable feeling and I felt like I wasn't welcomed in my own room. But I tried not to think about it. Thought it was only my mind playing a trick on me or something. But then, out of nowhere, our dog, a German shepherd who usually is calm and friendly, ran into my room to that corner and suddenly went crazy, raging and started barking like he was super angry. I got terrified and ran out of my room. Another day in the same house, I was in my room watching TV. It was on one of those old TVs, thick and heavy, you know, and I felt this uneasy feeling again. Then the TV started to shake and wobble, like a lot, back and forth, literally wobbling like someone was grabbing it with a lot of force. That really freaked me out and I ran away from there as fast as I could. One late evening, I was up watching TV with my mom and dad in the living room. We had this drawer where we kept some old mobile phones. They were all out of charge since we hadn't used them for a long time. But all of a sudden, one of the phones started ringing. We all got kind of surprised. I looked at the phone and it said unknown number. I answered, but no one was there. Only a white noise. Then it just turned off after like 30 seconds. My grandma had just passed away a few days prior. Maybe she tried to reach out to us. I don't know. But it sure was weird to say the least. Later, we moved to our current house. Now I don't have this eerie feeling of being watched as frequently anymore. Sometimes I feel it, but I try to ignore it. One time, I really couldn't ignore it though, and I felt that I couldn't be in my own room. I'm usually not that easily scared, but I really had to run out of my room. I tried to stay and ignore it as long as possible, but I really couldn't stay. It was like I was forced to leave. That night, I slept on the couch downstairs. I haven't really felt this kind of threatening feeling again after that incident, but I used to have a lot of nightmares where I dreamed that I'm not welcome in my own room and that something is chasing me out of there. But one night, I was in my bed reading stuff on my phone. It was quiet and everyone was asleep. I began to play guitar, so I have my guitars hanging on my wall on the other side of the room. Then I hear the strings of the guitar being played on. Imagine if you swipe your finger across all the strings one time. That's how it sounded, but there was no one in my room. That didn't feel scary though. It just felt like someone was visiting and wanted me to know about it. I live in a small town in northern Florida. 
there's a place nearby that has been a hotbed of strange activity. Locals to the area have talked for a long time about many of these things, and a friend of mine whose family used to occupy the area has told me a few stories his family passed down to him. The rundown in the area. There's a creek in the area that a monster supposedly inhabits. There is a graveyard not far from the creek that is very active with spirit activity, and there is a road that goes for miles through the woods. It's not uncommon for people to go to this particular part of the woods to end their own lives, and often people will park their cars on the road and go into the woods here and never return. The monster is just called the name of the town monster. He supposedly inhabits the creek primarily, but wanders the woods mostly during the day, maybe to hide from people who live in the area. He's very tall, about seven feet. He's similar to Bigfoot or maybe Swamp Thing from what people have said and I have observed. My friend told me his grandfather had passed down a story where he heard about his animals freaking out one night. He went out to check it out, bringing along his revolver. He saw the monster and yelled at it, thinking maybe it was a very large person as it was dark outside. He said it came at him making loud noises that were most definitely not human. He shot it once and it stopped momentarily before proceeding towards him, so he shot it twice more quickly and it turned and ran. I myself have been to the creek a few times at night. I one time heard some very odd noises ranging from animal noises that it sounded almost like the animals were hurt or afraid to screaming and loud grunting. I sat and listened to these noises with my friends for a moment before we went to check out the graveyard. On our way back, we stopped on the other side of the creek. This time, the noises weren't as loud, but we heard something moving around. It sounded as if though it came towards us, staying out of sight, then moved away, then we saw something big running at us through the creek. I later went back with my mom and sister who wanted to see the area after hearing the story. So we stopped where my friends and I did and I'm showing my mom the spot and recounting the story again. Then we noticed something large lurking in the back of the creek. We decided to leave when we see it noticed us. The Graveyard This cemetery had been around for a long time. Some of the dead have been there since the late 1800s. It contains a grave that somehow glows at night as if it were emitting a bright light. My friend's father and uncle supposedly went in there and touched the glowing grave at 3 a.m. and had a flock of crows descend onto the cemetery. When my friends and I went to check it out, we felt very much like we were in the company of others. I could see people wandering the area out of the corner of my eyes. As we entered, I made note of a deer statue at one of the graves. We walked towards the back until we could spot the glowing grave. As we approached it, my friends and I all saw the same thing, a large apparition that seemed to be a bright, almost fiery orange that made us feel threatened. We walked back. On our way out, I noticed the deer statue was now at the front fence rather than positioned where I had originally seen it. The Road and the Woods As I said earlier, the creepiest thing about this area is people ending their lives and going missing. It's not uncommon to find an empty car parked on the side of the road. More often than not, it will be there a few days later until the county comes and gets it. These things are the only objective truths I can put forth in all of this. In my experience with this road, I have noted catching glimpses of odd creatures in the woods as we drove. But what really got me was a sense of lost time. It feels as if though time passes slowly on this road. I recall my friends and I listening to the radio, telling stories, talking about different experiences we've had and just all in all having a good time, with the part of our look-see of this area that didn't involve being out in a graveyard or a creek at night. We heard at least a good seven to ten songs on the radio as we drove, but as we neared the end, we noticed that we had only driven for ten minutes. We stopped out on the road at night a few weeks later and it was overall a strange experience. Nothing very noteworthy aside from odd noises and just an overall weird feeling from the place. That's about all I have heard and experienced in this area. I know a lot of it can be attributed to me seeing things wrong, my imagination and many other things. I don't claim any of it to be objectively 100% true, but I felt the need to share my story and I'm curious if anybody who knows the area 
may have experienced the same thing. My sister and I both had very similar unexplained experiences 10-15 to years ago while we were still living in our parents' house. We grew up in a small gated community in the woods of New Jersey with only a handful of other residents. A few of them were very elderly. It first happened to my sister when she was about 15 years old and I was 11 or 12. In the middle of the night, I woke up to the sound of her bedroom door opening. She rushed out and went toward our parents' room, calling their names. I sat up in my bed and tried to listen as she woke them up, but I couldn't make out exactly what they were saying. All I could hear was that my sister was breathing heavily and very upset. This went on for a while until I eventually went back to sleep. In the morning, I went into the kitchen where my parents were sitting at the table with serious looks on their faces. They explained that in the middle of the night, our next-door neighbor, an elderly man in his 70s, had died in his sleep. I can't remember if they explained exactly what happened, but I believe it might have been a heart attack. At the time, I didn't make any connection between our neighbor's death and my sister getting up that night. I wasn't even really sure what happened to my sister and didn't ask her about it directly. A few years later, I had what I would eventually find out was an almost identical experience to hers. I shot up at my bed around 3 a.m. one night. I remember feeling confused, wondering what it was that woke me up. After a moment, my heart started racing and I turned the light on. Sitting at the edge of the bed, I started feeling an overwhelming sense of dread, like something was very wrong. My breathing became heavy and I started to sweat. In retrospect, I think it's safe to say that I was having a panic attack. I remember feeling restless yet unable to move from my bed. Eventually I calmed down and went back to sleep. In the morning I went into the kitchen where my dad was sitting at the table, crying. He explained to me that a man from our community who he was very close with had passed away in the middle of the night, somewhat suddenly. He was really shaken up about it. At the time, I didn't tell anyone about what happened to me the night before, but a few days later I remember the experience my sister had. It wasn't until a year or two later that I actually brought it up to her. I told her about the experience I had waking up in the middle of the night and how we found out about our dad's friend the next morning. She immediately seemed creeped out and told me about what happened to her the night that our neighbor died. Our experiences were nearly identical, both waking up in the night with overwhelming feelings of fear and panic. After that, we never really spoke about it again, but I think about it frequently. I've told this story to a number of people who found it pretty unsettling. I have never heard of anyone having a similar experience to ours. I don't have a definitive explanation for these events, but I really do believe that it's more than just coincidence. I believe that something about the energy these two people emitted, either at the moment or just before they died, is what woke me and my sister up. Please feel free to discuss and let me know if you or someone you know has had a similar experience. And thanks for listening. So when I was little, maybe six, my older sister, eight at the time, would wake me up screaming a lot in the middle of the night. This continued until she was in high school. No one really told me details, just that she was having night terrors, so I never thought much of it. Well, when I was about 18, I took my sister's old room when she moved out. It was a big room, so I was excited. Nothing major really happened to me, until a few months afterward, I had my nieces stay over. That night I woke up at around maybe 3 to 4 a.m. My nieces were sleeping on my floor. We made a bed up for them. I can't explain the feeling I had or why I didn't freak out, but there was just some dude leaning against my dresser watching my nieces. I just laid there watching him until I fell back asleep. He looked very old-timey, but maybe in his 20s. I didn't feel scared when I saw him. When I woke up the next day, I was pretty confused. I'm positive I saw him. I remember exactly what he looked like. Everything. I mentioned this to my sister and she began to describe the man, detail for detail. Apparently growing up, she would wake up and see this guy at the foot of her bed just watching her. That's why she'd wake up screaming. 
so that was pretty eerie. We decided not to mention it to my parents because my father's a pastor and they usually don't listen to me about that stuff. They just tell me to pray it away and being a kid, I was like, okay, fine. Well, about two weeks after this incident, I was woken up to the sound of my dad downstairs praying at about 4 to 5 a.m. He usually prays in his room, but for some reason he was pacing the hole downstairs, praying really loud. When I woke up the next day, I asked him what it was all about, and he told me that he was watching TV. He worked thirds as well at this time. He said he saw some guy looking at him from the stairs. He said he just sat and watched this guy very calmly walk down the stairs, past the living room, and evaporated into the kitchen. My dad said from there he jumped up and just started praying, blessing the house. I asked my dad what the man looked like and he described the same man my sister and I saw. A few nights later, things got real. I had a friend over and my older sister was upstairs with us as well. So it was me, my friend, my mom and sister. At around four-ish, we were woken up by what I can only describe as something absolutely destroying our kitchen. We could hear plates smashing, things breaking, it even sounded like they turned over our fridge. It was terrifying. The scariest part was that we could hear our dog screaming and whining like crazy. After a while, we thought it was a wild animal or something, so we called my sister's boyfriend to come over and kill it. He had guns, so I guess that was our line of thinking. I don't know. This is the weird part. So we're still hearing our kitchen just get ruined and what sounds like our dog dying. But when Kyle got there, he said it sounded like the house was being destroyed. Him and his friend grabbed their guns, rushed to the door, and the second he unlocked the door, silence. There was no noise, no smashing, nothing. Everything just stopped the second we heard the door open. He waited a few minutes until he came upstairs to get us, and at first he was angry. He thought we were pulling some stuff on him. When we went downstairs, everything was fine. No plates were smashed, nothing was out of place, but her dog. She was in the corner crying and peeing herself. She wouldn't get out of the corner for a long time. She was terrified and we were incredibly confused. To this day, we can't explain it and nothing has happened ever since. That was my weird paranormal story. I think about that man a lot and sometimes I wake up feeling watched, but nothing's happened since. Sometimes a light will be on when I know I just turned it off. Little things like that. Has anything like that happened to anyone else? I felt no fear when I was watching him. I didn't feel anything. Does that mean something? Maybe it somehow means he's not dangerous. I don't know. I think about it constantly and I just wish I had answers. My house isn't even that old, I don't think. Skinwalkers are not some mystical fantasy creatures. They're evil witches who like to cause pain and misfortune on others, and who may even cause death. In order to get their powers, they have to sacrifice someone they most love. The more they sacrifice, the more powers they get. This is an old story that happened in the 40s or the 50s, about a man who lived alone with his sheep and his dog in the middle of nowhere in his hogan. For weeks, he heard and saw strange things happening around him. Like a black shadow running, knocking on his house, a man's cough, and his sheep missing and later found dead and mutilated, until he found his dog dead. Tired and afraid of this, he went to a medicine man. He told the medicine man what he was experiencing. He blessed the man and told himself to cover himself with ash, leave no part uncovered, and to sit outside his house with a rifle and wait for it to come to him, and when you see it, and you'll know when you see it, you shoot at it, and it will leave you alone. So the man did as he asked, and waited in the dark for a long time before he heard it. Something was coming towards his house. When he looked to his left, he saw a dog or a coyote. He knew it then for what it was. He slowly raised the rifle and aimed it at the dog creature and shot at it, the scary part was when the bullet hit, instead of a dog cry, the creature let out a scream of a man who was just shot, and the dog creature immediately turned and ran away. 
After that, the man didn't see any strange things again. He even got a new dog. He fought with a skinwalker and won. I will start off with my very first paranormal experience. I was three or four and living in a small village in western Germany during the mid-80s. My family lived in a quaint little two-story farmhouse while we waited to get housing on base. My dad was in the military. My life was pretty normal. I have two brothers, one older and one younger than me, but that really isn't relevant to the story. I love that house and remember helping the little old lady that lived across the street snap peas, played outside with my brothers, and had a happy childhood for the most part. There was, however, one place in the house I refused to go. This is going to sound cliche, but it was the basement. The door to the basement was in the tiny kitchen. I would be in there helping my mom make cookies or something, and I remember getting an uneasy feeling just from the door to the basement. My dad would go down the stairs to the basement without a problem, but I refused to go with him. I mean, I would immediately start crying at the thought of going down there. It wasn't that it was dark and creepy. In fact, it was well lit and didn't have any blind corners or anything. The reason I wouldn't go down there was because an old man that, it seems, only I could see. I would tell my mom and she would tell me, I don't see anything. I would get the same response from all my family members, but there was an angry German man down there and he didn't like me. It went as far as I would have nightmares in that house, vivid and graphic nightmares, it is very telling that I remember these horror visions after 30 plus years like I had them last night, but I'm getting ahead of myself a little. These nightmares were the same every single night. Now remember, I'm at most 4 years old and have not seen a scary movie yet. Every night I would fall asleep without an issue and have a few happy dreams, and then it would start. In my nightmare I would see the stairs that led up to the top floor of the house where the bedrooms are. I saw the stairs like I was at the bottom of them, looking up, but I wasn't me. I would see things through someone else's eyes. I know, even in my dreams I was sleeping upstairs comfy in my bed, but as I started to go up the stairs, I would start to see the plaster on the walls crack and the thin boards beneath it start to splinter. The further up I go, the worse it gets, like the whole house is going to crumble. Then I start to see dismembered body parts come out of the wall, the stairs go up. They are decaying and smell horrible. I can see bone and raw darkening meat around the jagged cuts on each part. First it's the hands and feet, then the arms and legs. Finally the head with half its face bloated and green, with the other side sloughing skin so I can see the empty eye socket and the hole where the nose had rotted away. These body parts would hurl themselves at me like they mean to eat me. I would wake up just as a head starts to talk, but I don't know what it is trying to say to me as its torn, shriveled lips move, but there is no sound. I would wake screaming. My mom would comfort me and get me back to sleep. I would have normal dreams the rest of the night. This happened every night for the four or five months we lived in that house. When we finally moved, neither the nightmare or the man ever plagued me again, but I still remember it very vividly. As I grew older and developed a love for the sciences, especially anatomy, I realized that in my dream, the body parts were anatomically correct. I wish I could actually draw and then I could sketch a picture to show you how horrifying it was. I'll post another story later, thank you for reading this, even if most of you will believe I made this up. It's nice to get it off my chest. I've been carrying this around for 33 years. I used to live in a small town in Texas. My town was so small that it wasn't so much a town as it was just a really big neighborhood with one gas station. My town wasn't completely finished. A lot of the streets had empty lots and woods even though the town was 60 years old. It was possible to walk onto a lot, head to the woods, and get lost if you didn't know exactly where you were going. And since we had deer and wild animals running around, it wasn't a good idea to go wandering. Know what I mean? My house was in the oldest part of this town. I lived on a circle. Yeah, a circle. 
My street was an actual circle that you could drive all the way around. And what was weird about it was that my street had houses on all of the lots, but the houses on the inside of the circle, including mine, were the perimeter to about two acres of free woods, and it was so packed that you couldn't see through. It was just something everyone knew about but didn't talk about. My school had a media class that you could take, the kind where they tell you to make short films and stuff. A bunch of my friends from the neighborhood and I were grouped together for one of these short film projects. Like idiots, we decided to do a short horror film based off of the Blair Witch Project movie. It had been out by that time for a couple of years, so we thought it would be a cool idea since found footage films hadn't really become a thing yet, and we thought since our neighborhood, known for being creepy at the best of times, had a forest in it, we could shoot our project there. So my friends Genesis, Hunter, Tyler, Cass, and I decided to try to shoot our short film in one evening and night, and you guessed it, we decided to shoot in the woods right behind my house. My parents were cool with it because they'd be able to hear me yell if something happened and we didn't have curfews so we're like, cool, we'll shoot it on Saturday. Saturday rolls around and the first five hours are fine. Nothing spooky happens. So we go back to my house, eat, and decide to shoot the last couple of shots. This is when things go south. We come out of my house, jump the backyard fence, and head back into the woods. The second we hit the tree line, we all feel like something's off. It just doesn't feel right. The air is sticky and heavy. Yes, it's Texas, and that's a Texas spring for you, but this was different. It felt like walking through water or tar or mud. It was hard to just move forward. But the feeling goes away. We get through a couple more shots, and then it's time to shoot the last scene. It's simple. Get Genesis walking through the woods and into a clearing. That's it. Like I said, this area is about two acres total. We'd been all over the woods by this point, getting different shots, but at night? At night it felt like the woods we were in wasn't the same woods from that afternoon. The boulders weren't in the right place. The trees weren't in the right place. There was a clearing where there shouldn't have been one. It was really weird. In my mind, I'm thinking, alright, you just got turned around. Happens all the time, right? It's a sizable area, and just because you've been walking around it for five hours doesn't mean you know it like the back of your hand. I can accept that. What I can't accept is the fact that there was now a shed in the middle of the clearing that we decided to shoot our last scene in. What I mean is, when we scouted the place three days before shooting, when we went in there to check sound earlier that day, and even right before we went back to my house, there was no shed in that woods. None. Zip. Zilch. Zero. There were no buildings, no construction supplies, not even a football in that woods. And yet, here was the shed, in the middle of the clearing. We were all getting vibes from this thing. Like we weren't supposed to find it, or we were unwelcome in its presence, or that we were somehow intruding on its alone time. So the guys tell us to hang tight. They're going to go investigate. I don't remember exactly what happened, but I remember them coming back and telling us that we had to check it out. I went up to the shed and I realized that it was old. Very old. The wood was warped and the walls bowed inwards. The wood from the shed didn't look like any of the trees from that part of Texas. It wasn't mesquite. My best guess would be maybe maple. I was walking around the edge of the shed and we were trying to figure out where this thing came from or if it had always been there, how we managed to miss it. We were close enough to my house that I could hear my dad talking on the phone in the backyard. In fact, all we had to do was walk forward for a minute or two and we'd hit the backyard fence. That's when I realized that this shed had no windows or doors. I told my friends and we looked for trap doors or latches. Tyler here even got on the roof of the shed to check for a way. Not that we wanted in, but... At this point, I was curious because it didn't feel like the shed should be there. We didn't find any way into the shed, so we tried to figure out what to do. The shed was in the middle of the shot, but none of us wanted to shoot, especially not Genesis. She wasn't having any of it. We were in the middle of deciding to shoot some other time because we were all creeped out when we hear it. A laugh. A long, low, guttural laugh from the shed. And then we heard... Thud, thud, thud. 
We were close enough to the shed that we could see the wall shake and we booked it out of there. It took us less than two minutes to get back to my backyard. At this point, you're probably thinking this island belongs in no sleep or we were on something. I don't blame you. I wouldn't believe it either if I hadn't been there. But I told my dad when we got back who, back then, didn't believe in the paranormal. It was still pretty early, about 10 p.m., so my dad goes into the house, gets his shotgun, and goes to get our neighbor, a cop who also has his shotgun, tells us to get inside, and they go into the woods with flashlights and everything. He was gone for 10 minutes. When he got back, he told me that I'm not allowed to go back there anymore and that we'd had to figure something else out for the final scene. It was years before he told me what happened in the woods, but he finally did. He and our neighbor found the shed, couldn't find a door, and heard the laughing. Then they heard growling go from inside the shed to outside of the shed. Then, and my dad still swears on this, they saw something huge and human-like come out of the wall of the shed, go down on all fours, turn black, and growl at them. These two grown men, both with significant military experience, nearly crapped themselves trying to get back to the house. My dad petitioned the town to get the shed removed and it was knocked down a week later. We never talked about it again. But here's where it gets weird again. My little sister still lives at home. She moved back in because she got into med school and needed to save money. She called me a few days ago to tell me that one of the dogs got loose this afternoon and headed for the woods. When she went in there, she saw a dark wood shed. The dog saw it too and was barking and growling. Then she and the dog heard a growl and the dog backed up like it was scared and went home. My little sister didn't know about the shed unless my dad told her. I never told her about it because she's younger than me and a bunch of weird stuff had already happened. My sister told my dad who went back out to see it. He said it was the same shed. He won't say anything else, but I know he's probably panicking. I don't know what to think about all of this. I mean, it's just one of the many weird things that happened in that neighborhood when I was a kid, but it always stuck out as being ominous. Is it possible we had collective hysteria? Sure, we were kids and we were making a short horror film. Is it possible that we just missed the shed? Absolutely. The woods can get confusing even when it's broad daylight. Is it possible that a wild animal was closer to us than we thought and that's what we heard instead of a weird scream? Of course, it's Texas and we were known to have big cats running around. But what I can't explain is how the shed my dad had torn down years ago shows back up again and my sister's the one to find it. That's what I'm having trouble with. My dad had the fire department come to take the shed down. They said it was a fire hazard, so they got rid of it. My sister's safe, my family's safe, and I'm happy to hear that, but why a shed with no windows or doors? I posted this on another subreddit, but it wasn't helpful, so I'm here now, hoping someone has had some similar things happen to them. I don't want to be the only one dealing with something like this. Some interesting things have been going down on this house for months now. At first I chalked it up to Ambien or Lunesta or even Lithium or just an episode. However, after recent conversations with my dad, I'm not sure this is the case. So last year I started hearing very audible voices. It would happen once or twice, sometimes it was hard to tell what they were saying, other times they were clear. I would hear a very heavy vibrating sound here and there as well. My phone is always on silent, my parents phone is always on a loud ring, and would feel like something is there with me, and my door would even move on its own. So anyways, one day I just said out loud to screw off and it just sort of died down. Cut to this year. A few months earlier, I heard a very clear male voice say, She's right there. And my bed had started to shake. Okay, so I get up and I go to sleep on the couch. After that, I started having a cat sleep with me for comfort and the shaking stopped. When we put down one of my cats, I would hear her meow sometimes and the click, click, click of her claws. And just over a month ago, I started to hear the sound of feet crunching on gravel. 
At first I brushed it off as an animal, could be a coyote or a deer, but it dawned on me that that would sound different. This sounded like shoes on gravel, but whenever I would go look outside, there was nobody there. At times, I'd hear the sound of my car door opening and closing, but I always lock my doors. A month and a half ago, one of my cats was outside and I heard him audibly cry out in pain and I panicked. I ran out the garage door and called for him and he comes dashing in, but there's nothing out there. No owls, coyotes, other cats or people. He was unharmed. Last summer, he was coming home with injuries. I assume cats fight, but some of these look like someone was hurting him because they look like burns more than scratches. For some reason now, my cats hate being in the garage. They used to love it, but now they're afraid of it. About three weeks ago, the part where I put my key in started to fall out. Turns out, the thing that latches in and keeps it in place somehow broke. Metal broke. Dad says there's no possible way that could have happened. Dad's gun, checkbook, truck keys, coffee cup, and mom's ring have all gone missing within the past three months. And tonight, when I got up to let my dog out, I saw a light shine into the window. I live in the middle of nowhere. Back to the lights, though. I go back into my room. One cat is out of the room and using the litter box, and the other is sleeping with me. The third cat is outside, probably torturing mice or something. I hear the sound of a computer starting up, but that would be impossible because my parents are fast asleep. Mom's laptop is dead, and Dad is out in his little hut. A few minutes after I hear the startup noise, I hear the cat that's outside my room hiss, and then she starts to meow to be let back into my room. I poke my head out, and there's nobody in the living room, hallway, or laundry room. The dog is sleeping peacefully on the couch. I need to convince Dad to get security cameras. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r Let's Read Official, and give and receive feedback from the community, and maybe even hear it featured here on the channel. And if you want to support the page even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt.com. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends, and I'll see you again soon.